This video is brought to you by Spike Brewing. It's brisket day. It is brisket day. <laughs> this may surprise you, but this is the one that I might be most interested, excited in. The Goldie's method for making brisket turns out consistently the best briskets that not only I've made, but pretty much everybody who's ever tried that method make. But I keep getting the same questions. Do I need an offset smoker? Can I do it on my Kamado? Can I do it on my pellet grill? Well, we're gonna answer at least one of those questions today because you and me and this brisket and that Kamado Joe over there have a date with destiny. Let's find out whether we can make a Goldie style brisket on a Kamado Joe. So let's start by getting the Kamado Joe set up for double indirect cooking, which is gonna be the closest approximation to the kind of cooking that we do with offsets. So the first step in this double indirect setup is putting our heat deflectors in here and then the slow roller base and the rack and then the heat deflector that's part of the slow roller. So this is why we got double indirect. We've got the heat deflectors down below and we've got this as well. We're gonna close down the bottom vent to about one finger and then we're gonna watch as the temperature stabilizes here. And then as it comes up to temperature, when we get up to about 200, I'm going to close down here to the second notch. When we get up to about 250, I'm going to close down to the first notch, and then I'm going to fine tune until we get to about 275, which is where we want to cook. Okay, sun's on its way up. Let's get this thing open and trimmed up so we can get it on the cooker. So we want this to be aerodynamic. We want the smoke to flow over this evenly, so we don't want any weird points that are going to disturb airflow. This is super thin, so we're going to go ahead and trim that and round it out. So we want smooth on top as well as on the bottom. Here we've got a little bit of deckle fat that we're gonna pull out and we're not gonna get super aggressive here. One of the things that nice people at Goldie's taught me was that having a little bit of this extra deckle fat in between the point and the flat when that renders that we've got a shot at that helping keep the flat a little bit moister. So we're gonna try to make that same effect here. All right, a little bit of a warm water spritz and then a light coating on the bottom here. This by the way is the Goldie's rub. So this is actually what they use when they make that number one rated brisket that blows everybody's mind, including mine. We don't rub, we pat. I don't know why they don't call it a pat. They call it a rub, but this is what we do. And then we'll flip it over and do the same thing for the top. And I'm also going to spritz the sides. As we learned in uh, the most controversial video I've ever made. Don't forget the sides. So I'm going to put a meter probe into the thickest part of the flat here. Not that we cook to temperature, but this will help me keep track of what's going on. And at least I'll know now it's time to cook. Meet you at the grill. All right, so we're set up with our double indirect setup. You can see the steam coming out of the water pan because we just filled it up with hot water. And here's a new gadget if you don't already have one. If you are using the double indirect setup on your Kamado Joe, the Smokeware drip pans don't fit between the slow roller and uh, the grates. So they just came out with this new low profile drip pan that's built specifically for this purpose. Thank you to Smokeware. I will put a link in the description so you can get one. So let's go ahead and uh, get this set up with our grates and let's get our brisket on with the point towards the back. Remember on a Kamado, the hottest part is on the back, even with a double indirect setup. Notice I've got my meter in there. Let's close this down and get that meter set up. All right, so we're gonna set up our cook, beef, a roast, a brisket, Remember that uh, we don't cook to temperature, so I'm gonna set it all the way to 208, which is the maximum that the uh, meter meter plus will, uh, will cook to. And I'm gonna start the cook. And then I'm gonna set an alarm here for if the internal temperature rises above 195, which is gonna be much, much later today, but that's when I'm gonna start checking for tenderness. And that's of course how we cook these things. So we'll be back to see how this brisket's doing in a couple hours. Okay, so we all know that with Goldie's briskets, we don't look for eight or 10 hours until they're close to done. Although we're gonna look a little bit on the Kamado Joe just to make sure we don't have anything drying out because the airflow is different than an offset. But in the meantime, you got nothing to do with a Kamado that manages its fire. 
And it's barbecue day, so I got a surprise for you guys. Check this out. We've got a new sponsor on the channel that is all about creating things the scientific way, the same way that we do for barbecue. It's not just barbecue day, it's brew day. So Spike Brewing is partnering with Eat More Vegans because they know there's a huge amount of crossover between people that love to barbecue at home and people love to brew their own beer. Now, these guys are in the United States, they're out of Milwaukee, all this stuff is made here, and it's so incredible, the quality of workmanship of this stuff. And this is their new beginner bundle, because I'm a beginner, and I'm gonna be learning how to do this the same time that you guys are. By the way, I don't usually put chapters in my videos, but if you're not interested in brewing, I'm gonna put chapters in so you can just find the timestamp and fast forward to when we're done with this. But I think this is gonna be pretty cool. So even if you're not brewing beer at home, I think you might wanna follow along. The first recipe that I'm gonna be starting with is an Irish style stout. Why? Well, because I'm gonna be making corned beef in a corned beef video for St. Patrick's Day in a couple of weeks and might as well use my own stout for making smoked corned beef, right? I'm gonna start by adding water that's been preheated uh, just because it's gonna go faster bringing it up to temperature. So I'm gonna drop my kettle back in. So for this recipe, we wanna be set on mash and we wanna be at 159 degrees. So I'll put the lid on and let it heat up and this is probably gonna take I don't know, a half hour for me. If you put cold water in, take an hour or hour or so for you. So uh, I guess I'll go grab some lunch. I'll be back when this is at 159 degrees. All right, so the water's at 159 degrees. So it's time to add our grain and start the process called the mash. Now they don't include this in the beginner bundle. They tell you buy a spoon or a mashing paddle, which I did. Uh, I bought a uh, giant one because like, I'm sure I can figure out something to do with a giant wooden paddle. So we're just gonna stir our mash here, make sure that all of the grains get submerged. And then we're gonna let these sit for about 10 minutes to settle. Let's go see how our brisket's doing. Okay, so we're four and a half hours in. Now normally we wouldn't be checking this on an offset for you know eight or 10 hours till we got close to ready. But on a Kamado, you know, they act differently. The airflow is different. So let's take a look and see whether we need to spritz or anything. All right, so we got a little bit of water pooling up here, nothing major. A little bit of color on the sides, really not a lot of color on top, but I'm used to smoking briskets on offset smokers. It does take a little bit more time to get smoke coverage over here, sometimes until it's pretty close to done before it's brown, I hope. That's what we're gonna see. Uh, we've got a little bit of dryness on the sides here, so I'm just gonna spritz, just keep the sides moist. Pretty sure at this point, four hours in, that whole water pan underneath is empty. So let's just keep some moisture in here because of the way the air flows. The top has got plenty of moisture. I don't need any uh, help up there. So we'll look again in a couple hours. It doesn't smell like beer, but it is dark. I mean, this is what a stout, I guess, is gonna look like. We got the makings of the good stuff. I'm gonna shut off my pump. So I'm gonna lift this basket out. So while that drains, I'm gonna turn the pump back on and we're gonna run it back through for about 10 minutes, just letting that mash wash through and wash down the grains so we get all of the stuff drained out. So I'll be right back. Okay, so we're done rinsing. So I'm gonna go ahead and move my hose over here to what you'll learn later is the Whirlpool pump. And then I can remove this basket. I'm gonna change the temperature controller from this mash setting to a boil setting. I'm gonna leave it at 100% and that's gonna bring this up. It's gonna boil it somewhere around 200 degrees. And then uh, we'll be back and I'll show you what we do once we're in a boil. Okay, so we're over 200 degrees now. We've reached a boil. So I'm gonna add the one ounce of hops that they uh, sent with the beginner's kit for me. Let's go take another look and see if that brisket's doing any better. Less than seven and a half hours in, we're already at 195, or at least based on where the probe is. Let's go see if we're getting close and let's see if we're getting any color. Well, we're darker than we were before. It still doesn't look like an offset brisket. It's still more brown than black. All right, so I'm temping at 176 down here in the flat, 186 here in the middle. Yeah, the point, see the point I'm getting actually over 200 and the point feels like it's ready. I think what I wanna do is spin this around so that the flat is in the back at the hot spot and gets the rest of the heat but this might not take more than another hour and it might not ever look like a brisket. Let's see uh, how long it takes for this to get the rest of the way to uh, probe tender.
All right, you guys think it's gonna be ready? You know, it's looking more briskety. It still doesn't have that offset dark bark. Well, the point we knew was done. Let's see the flat, ah, we're still not there. And the flat's still only temping at 194, 195. So I think we got at least another half hour, 45 minutes. We'll get over here, I'm only at 184. Yeah, this has got a ways to go, which means more opportunity to get more smoke on it. Maybe it'll end up looking like a brisket. We'll see. Okay, the Whirlpool's been running for about 10 minutes. New piece here. This is the flux capacitor. Just kidding. It's the flex fermenter. It's also part of the beginner bundle. So I'm going to stop my pump. I'm now going to take this from the Whirlpool. I'm going to open up the flex, start it up, and then just let it out a little bit. And just a little bit at a time, it's moving my wort from the kettle into the flex where it's going to sit for two weeks and ferment and then it'll be time to bottle it'll come out of the bottles in a couple more weeks and it'll be time to make its appearance in the corned beef video drop a note in the comments if you guys are enjoying this i know you're probably not enjoying it as much as i am because you don't get to do it yet but you can get one of these if you want they actually honor the emv10 coupon code so you can get a 10 percent discount on this beginner bundle or other stuff from spike brewing so uh, if you want to try it and learn along with me, do it. But I think this might be a new cooker in the family. So let me know if you guys want to learn with me and you want to see some of this stuff because I'm an amateur at this. But if you like it, I'd love to develop like a low carb beer recipe, some other things. So let me know what you think. Okay, I'm really hoping that we're there. Oh, look at that. Big difference. Turning it around made a big difference. So let's get this thing over and wrapped. All right, so we're going to put the tallow on the bottom, not over the top. Let it absorb what it wants to absorb. There we go. And you can see we still don't have that dark color that we're used to. Maybe a little bit on the point over here, but the fat cap is still pretty light colored. I don't know. If, I mean, it's crispy. Maybe we got the crispy fat. Maybe, you know, I don't know. We're going to find out. I guess I can stop guessing, right? So let's go ahead and wrap. I'm gonna make a hole for the meter probe just so I can keep track of the temperature while it's in the warmer. Not really necessary, but I was putty trained at gunpoint, so I'm all about the details. All right, and it goes. It is 7.40 at night, so 14 hour rest means uh, 10 a.m. Brisket for breakfast, anyone? It's brisket day. It is brisket day. It seems like we have a lot of brisket days here. We have a lot, but this may surprise you, but this is the one that I might be most interested, excited in. Cause I because have a you have a, Joe. you have so, a big Joe too, right? Yes. If this turns out good, then you can make Goldie style That's brisket. That's right. Yeah. This is something I actually might be able to make at home. I'm, Any predictions? Uh, predictions is it's going to be less dark than uh, okay. the ones <laughs> that we did that were on the offset smoker. It All looks right. super juicy. It looks super <laughs> juicy. You're right, it is less dark. Wow, you can look at even that. Pull it out. Yeah, look at that. There we go. All right, that looks good. I mean, it it's got the jiggle. Moment of truth. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> I mean, it would be nice to be able to make a Goldie's brisket without staying up all night. That would be incredible well yeah i think it passes the juice test that <laughs> yeah that is not gonna have a problem with juiciness is it so dry we're good so other than the color mm -hmm. observations about the inside how close or different was it um, i mean it looks pretty close on the inside right it's hard to really tell all right oh, so it looks it's like falling it, apart it's falling apart so we might have over cooked it leaving it in the warmer to overnight for maybe we shouldn't have cooked all the way to tender i mean that's what we did on the other one i don't know so let me tell you there's two things that i would do differently yeah. if we do this again so maybe cooking it at 275 the whole way on the kamado joe was a mistake maybe okay. that was too much i mean i think that probably contributed to how much or little smoke it got and the color and maybe some of the texture maybe a more traditional low and slow Maybe it wouldn't have had as much continuation cooking. Okay. Um, I guess a second thing is I didn't rest it before putting it in the warmer because they didn't off the offset, but same thing. I could let it come down to 160 or so 
and then mm -hmm. put it in the warmer at 140. And then the other thing I could try is James from Smoking Dad Barbecue actually did a video a couple months ago where he used the dojo, oh, the pizza attachment. Right. Remember that one? To get all the extra airflow. And he mm -hmm. said that was as close as he's got a Kamado to an offset. Well, so my biggest question is going to be, is it close to the offset? Not is it just like the offset? Yeah, it's not. It can't be just like the yeah, offset, exactly. right? It's not. It's not. I mean, the fat look cap does look good. Mm -hmm. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. All right. Let's uh, let's taste the point. Mm. So good. Yeah, it tastes delicious. It's juicy. It's just a little overcooked. I mean, from a flavor standpoint, it's fantastic. It's all there. It's just as good. I don't even know that there. I could tell a difference side by side. I mean, we didn't cook them side by I side. I mean, but the only thing that taste is the wise, difference is the look. Yeah. Here's the answer. Yes, you can make a Goldie style brisket on a Kamado Joe. Yeah, this is good. Successfully. I'm still going to make mine on the offset. If you want to see how this got made on the offset, uh, check out this video right there. And then if you want to see the whole long rest versus short rest experiment I also did with the Goldie's brisket, I'll put that one yeah, right down there. And we'll see you next time on Eat, Eat More, More Vegans. Vegans.